Today it's viewed as false science. But at one time, graphology, the study of handwriting, was a pretty big deal. People used to think you could psychoanalyze a person, their state of mind, from something they had written at a particular time under question. Folks even believe you could evaluate personality traits by handwriting. And they used to profile job applicants doing that. Can you imagine getting a job or, or not because of the way you signed your name? I, I don't know what your handwriting looks like or what it might say about you. It might look like some beautifully flowing artistic calligraphy. It might be a more polished, precise penmanship. It might look like hieroglyphics. Or perish the thought it might even look like mine. My hands hurt. I get in a hurry. And what I write can look like three languages written together backwards. Can you relate? Well, for a few minutes, I want you to go back with me to those wonderful, innocent days of childhood when we were just beginning to write. Banners went across the, uh, the top of the classroom with letters of the alphabet staring down at you. They were looking down at you like a bully challenging you to a pit fight. I dare you to write like this, capital A, lowercase a, capital B, lowercase b, and all the way to Z. Remember the landscape-shaped writing tablets inside were sheets of paper with bold lines at the bottom, bold lines at the top, perforated lines between the two. And when we practiced our alphabet, we were told to stay inside the proper lines. Remember that? That huge, heavy, thick pencil without an eraser? What clever soul came up with that idea? Give a five or six-year-old a log to write with, tell them to start doing something they've never done, and expect them to do it perfectly. Let me share with you my experience. I think there are some comparisons we might make between my learning how to write and life itself. Comparisons that might help us continue to grow in our love for God. A God willing to forgive. Here's comparison number one. When I was learning to write, I always messed up. I couldn't get through the alphabet or even get through using one sheet of paper without a blunder. I messed up. And I did it so often. Life is like that. We're forever making mistakes with life. I sin, you sin, and we do so often. Paul reminds us that none is righteous, no, not one, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3, verses 9 and 23. So here's comparison number two. When I was learning to write and I messed up, they gave me a long pink eraser. But even when I erased and wrote over my mistake, I could still see where I had messed up. Again, life is a lot like that when we sin and try to correct our bad decision, it seems like there's always something reminding us of how badly we messed up. It's called consequences. And Galatians 6 verse 7 reminds us that whatever one sows, that will he also reap. So here's lesson three. Comparison number three, when we were learning to write, sometimes, if you're like me, you made mistakes over and over again. I just couldn't stay in the lines or make the loops of the letters the way they needed to be. So I made the same mistakes over and again. Life's a lot like that. There are times we make the same mistakes and we do so repeatedly. I can't speak for you, but I'm telling you, I know how to relate to Paul's words. I have the desire to do what's right, but not the ability to carry it out. Romans 7:18. In other words, I want to live without messing up, 
but I do, and I do, and I do. And that brings us to our last comparison. Comparison number four. When I was learning to write, I would try to erase my mistakes and leave a dark smudge on the paper. Then when I tried to erase the smudge, I'd tear a hole in my paper and it couldn't be repaired. Haven't you ever felt that way with life? The mistakes we make leave us smudged, dirty, ripped up, broken. Remember the mission of Jesus? Heal the brokenhearted. Luke 4, 18. That's me. So here's the sum and substance of it all. Each of us have sinned and there's no way we can overlook the mistakes we've made. We even make the same mistakes repeatedly. And because of our bad decisions, we've made a smudged, botched up mess of our lives. We're broken and there's nothing we can do on our own to repair ourselves and get back to being the way we used to be. Ah, that's why God's forgiveness is so wonderful. Every time we're forgiven, God gives us a clean sheet of paper. No mistakes, no smudge marks, no tears, brand spanking new. When God forgives me, He makes me new. Every time He forgives me, He does that. Look at our current memory verse again, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. If anyone is in Christ, he's a new creature. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Let's think about that some more with your study leader. And I want you to know, I can't wait until we get back together to study again.